showtime, a-holes. Oh! Galaxy Volume 2. Okay, this is the follow-up to the original that came out in 2014. This came out in um, 2017. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because there were three Marvel movies that came out this year. Big three, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, this is the follow-up to the original. Um, Yeah, I I think we all really enjoyed the first uh, Guardians. Uh, Captain just probably just likes it, but yeah, we really enjoyed the first Guardians film. It was such a surprise, um, taking such an obscure, weird comic book property, scraping the bottom of the barrel and turning Mm -hmm. it into a household name, having us give a crap about a talking raccoon in a talking tree, and just expanding the entire galaxy and world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, of course, we're excited to get dive back into the adventures of these uh, assholes from the galaxy. Um, I saw the trailers, uh, and I was really excited. It looked great. Um, looked pretty. looked just as good as the first film, if not better. And uh, we get Kurt Russell playing Star-Lord's dad. Oh, this had to be a good one. So, I remember seeing this in the theater. I think we all saw it together. Yeah, so we all saw it together. Like 10 o'clock or 11 at night. Yeah, like yep. a, near, nearly midnight from... Was it midnight? It wasn't midnight, midnight for me. Near, near, no, near. Near. near, near yeah, it was Thursday like, night. We yeah. saw it at like 9 or 10 o'clock. It was yeah. Really? Yeah, because that movie was... Yeah, because like remember hours. it got out really late. Yeah, and yeah. We were all exhausted. Right, yeah. It was a yeah. It was a pretty long movie. But yeah. Well, because remember we were gonna get tickets for an earlier showing, but then it was like sold out. Like we couldn't get seats together, mm-hmm. so we went to dinner instead and bought tickets for the later showing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right. We went to B Dubs, yeah. But yeah. So remember going into this film really excited, and I had a blast with this movie too. It was really, really good. I liked it quite a bit. Um. I don't know if I can say it is better than the first film, but it is right there. Like, almost there with the first movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, they, they expanded more on the on the character development with all the Guardians. Um, I like the dynamic that um, Star-Lord had with um, his dad, Ego. Um, just overall, it was just more of a character-driven movie, which I didn't expect. I thought it was just going to be more of a zany ball of the action picture and it was in certain moments but like I was surprised that it focused more on the emotion which I really liked uh but yeah so Crimson Amazon what did you think about Garden of the Galaxy Volume 2 oh yeah Crimson <laughs> Crimson <laughs> I keep forgetting my own name uh huh um it was it was enjoyable Um, I didn't, you guys are going to destroy me. Okay. I didn't like Ego. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to Ego. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't like Ego. I didn't like him in the comics either. 
mm-hmm. even though that's really not how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they did a bunch of weird stuff together. Yeah. Um, Mantis was unnecessary and dumb. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know. That's really all I have to say about it. It was okay. It wasn't a great movie, but I had fun with it. It just felt like, I don't know, it just felt like they did the same thing as Guardians 1. Like, their jokes were pretty much the same. Mmm, I didn't get to agree to disagree, but we'll get I don't know, it just, it, Marvel for me, in general, the jokes are getting old, so, I know Guardians get to pass, because they're supposed to be funny, me for God's sake, it's a talking raccoon and a talking tree. Mm-hmm. Baby Groot was the best part of the movie. Oh, I love Baby Groot. He was adorable, mm-hmm. and feisty. Um, Rocket's my favorite character in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um... That's pretty much all I have to say. I really do not have much to say about this movie. Okay. Captain (laughs) Eagle, Captain Eagle, what did you think about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? I enjoyed it. I think it was good. (laughs) (laughs) That's it! Um, (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say for my general thoughts. It was... It was... It was good. (laughs) (laughs) Dang, y'all just like, yeah, it it was enjoyable. Yeah. Dark Nix is the same thing. I like it. I did like it. For any, um, going into this, I was expecting, you know, a good move. Good, pretty good movie. God, what, I think it was the, it, this did come out during the big premise of the year last year when Marvel had its, this was the first Marvel movie of 2017, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, there was a lot of expectations because, you know, Marvel's were coming out with another movie, but, and they did deliver on the first of their three movies. So, I very much enjoyed it. Is it as good as the first one? No. Yeah. But, for what it, for what it was, I, did, I had a good time. Okay. So, I guess we'll just go through, <laughs> go through the character stuff. Um, we'll start with Star-Lord. Um... <clears throat> The Star Lord I thought was also really good in this movie. Uh, pretty much the same as he was in the first film. Yeah. But added layer with um, Ego. Um, I just pretty much like, like I said, the, 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 the character stuff that they focused on with all the Guardians I thought was really good. And it was a nice change of pace. And uh, I liked that he had to deal, he was dealing with the um, conflict of not having his dad around and um, pretty much blaming him for... Um, um, his mom's death, and having him be captured as a child from Yondu, um, and also dealing with the fact that he's part celestial. That's a lot to take in, and, uh, just seeing him deal with that I thought was really, really interesting. Um, the one thing that just kind of bothered me about it, though, is, um, he came off a bit childish. Later on in the movie, when he did find out that he's a Celestial and has all these great abilities, he started to become a little bit too egotistical in moments. (laughs) Too ego? (laughs) That makes sense. It does make sense. But yeah, I just just felt he was a bit whiny in certain moments. Um, Especially towards Gamora, for no reason. Um, But overall, I I did like... I did like his overall... Development with ego. That's mainly the probably my favorite part of the movie. Really, is just ego, um, which we'll get to later. I want to get through all the guardians first. Um, Gabora, uh, I think she really improved from the first film. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I did like her in the first movie, but I just felt like her character was just kind of inconsistent. Like sometimes you could see that she's the greatest assassin in the galaxy, and then sometimes she's just this innocent, frail little green girl but like she she's definitely a more consistent character there's more to her and once again building on the dynamic with her and nebula um which i just i'll talk about nebula too and while we're in it but it's like yeah gamora i thought was really good improved a lot and nebula in turn made her a better character to me because i didn't like her in the first movie i thought she was just he was very bland because I'm gonna kill an guardian I hate my sister that she had that she you over me no I mean she's she's still she's still moping around but it's like she still has the 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 dynamic the dynamic with Gamora which 
helps her become a better character and I cared was more sympathetic towards her situation so I thought that overall that was an improvement um uh Drax he's the funniest part of the movie that's a good thing and a bad thing to me um yeah she he had some hilarious lives in this movie his delivery was so much better Dave Bautista the actor has become such a such a long way from when he first acted. I really see him becoming a good actor. Uh, and just his delivery alone in this one, I just feel like he's just really good. He had some of the funniest lines. I was like, <laughs> my stomach was hurting with how much I was laughing. Um, though, why I say it's also a bad, I feel it's also a bad thing because Drax was not this comedic in the first film. And he was only reacting to the fact that he's very literal and he takes things very seriously and that's where the comedic stuff come off of because he's so oblivious to the comedic stuff and one-liners and figure speeches so that's where the comedy I felt naturally worked but this one they just wanted to make him a comedian and funny which was entertaining for it but it's just like I still wanted the tragedy there and we get a glimpse of it when he's, he's talking to um, Mantis about his wife and his daughter that's pretty much the most we got from that, but I just wanted more of that, but we just kept getting the funny lines, funny lines, so I just felt that was kind of a downfall, and he didn't really fight that much, because in the first movie, he was kicking ass, and I just wanted him to kick more ass in this movie, and he does have some fight scenes here and there, but it's like not as much as he did in the first movie, um, so that was kind of a letdown for me. Um, and then we get to, once again, the MVPs of the entire Guardians franchise, Rocket and Groot. Love Rocket. Oh, yes, Rocket. Best damn character. Yes, he is, he's still great. Um, he's still so great. Um, I, yeah, just, he's pretty much just, he's just as charismatic as he was in the first film. Um, he's stealing, stealing scenes from everybody. Um, and Baby Groot, um... At first, I thought Baby Groot was just going to be uh, more gimmicky, sell more toys because he's a baby now, stuffed animals, yeah, and all and that. And yep, that's that's. I what mean, it yeah, is. he still is, but um, he still was very entertaining to watch. Um, I just feel like Rocket and Groot they just really make this franchise. Without these two, I don't think these movies will be just as successful. But yeah, this Rocket and Groot I thought was really good. Um, yeah, any, anything you guys want to add about the Guardians overall? Baby Groot, um, kind of like what you said, I thought he was going to be stupid. And he was. And he, was <laughs> he was adorable. Dang. He was adorable. Especially when he was like trying to be all tough, but you just see him like growling at people and he's like, he's trying, what, five inches tall? He's trying to kick, their, oh kick and hit their feet. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> when the Ravagers put him in a cage, I was like, ooh, I'm about to mm. And uh, no cares. I'll snap his little twig in half. Ooh. Grumpy, oh, grumpy. <laughs> He's also a hater of the um, opening title sequence because it was just him dancing while oh the, guardians were, the Guardians were fighting stupid. the giant monster. That was, that was actually well done. That was really about. well done. I love that scene. <laughs> That was so good. Oh, Keep yeah. in mind, Captain Eagle's a casual, so mm. he's a semi-casual. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. The, that's as nice as I'm gonna get. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know, there are some funny group moments, but it gets to be like, all right, we fucking get it. You're trying to push this guy so hard, but it's like it gets annoying and gimmicky. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Oh, and I loved Rocket in the first movie, but he was just a dick in this movie. I didn't like him as much. He's a dick in the first <laughs> movie. No, no. But he's like more of a stick in the mud and a dick in this movie. Mm, no, because I actually... Yeah. Because he's like antagonizing himself with the Guardians. That's he, what he did in the first movie. No, but like like him and like uh, Star-Lord like weren't even friends really in the second one. Because he was just, like, pissing him off so much. They weren't friends in the first movie, either. They didn't even have a chance to, like, sit down and talk to each other. They don't really like each other that much. So, I felt like that was pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and, that it, and even when they're fighting, it's entertaining to watch. Because especially when Rocket's, like... Rocket and um, Star-Lord are, like, piloting the ship. 
against the yellow people. Shit, I don't know the yellow people's names. People. Those gold people. Fuck those yeah. gold people. It's like, um, Stupid. it's funny when they're arguing about um, who's going to pile the shit first. And Rocket freaking says, um, you know what, one of these days, you're going to be falling asleep. And I'm going to put something very special in your dresser. And then you're going to open in that dresser pillow. and your pillow under your pillow. And you're going to be looking under your pillow and be like, hey, what's that? And it's and what do you know? It's gonna be a freaking piece of turn. And then uh, Chris, and then um, sorry, not Chris, Chris Pratt, Star Lord, Star Lord was like, "You are not going sh- under my pillow." Oh, it's not gonna be my shit. It will be Drax's. <laughs> and Drax is like, "Ha ha! I have huge turns." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess to me, I just felt like it was consistent with the first movie. I know there was like one. It's probably because like the first movie had more time to develop him as you know a sympathetic character. Where in this one, they only have like one scene with him and Yandu, where he starts getting emotional. But that was pretty much. Yeah, I like that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, Yandu. Yandu's great. Oh, yes. Yandu is great. Yandu's always been great. Yandu's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's fucking but he's, awesome. But he's even better in this movie. Yes. And he gets more screen time. Mm-hmm. And he gets the proper fin. This yeah, that's a big fin. Yes. Like a lot. I'm Mary Poppins, yo! That's going to be a meme for the rest of the time. Uh, Which was improv too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then we find out with Yondu, it's not just all black and white. Of he just wanted to capture um, Star Lord just because. I mean, at first it was like that, but it's really mainly because he wanted to get him away from his dad, who was ego. Let's talk about ego. Um, so I guess I'm going to be I'm in the minority on this. Um, even though this interpretation of ego is like a bunch of different interpretations of Star Lord's dad put into one, I actually really like this interpretation of ego. I was afraid that from the get go, Kurt Russell was just going to be Kurt Russell and it's not going to be any special stuff with him. He's just going to be playing himself and that's it. But no. He's the freaking full celestial freaking planet I know. everything. Oh yeah, you and me. Literally when uh-huh. they show Planet Eagle, we were both like, like oh, oh, we were Planet out. Eagle. It was amazing. I did not think they were gonna do it, mm-hmm. but James Gunn, you went for it and I'm happy for that. But not only that, I thought I thought Kurt Russell was really good as Ego. I liked his character. He was charismatic. He wasn't just one-dimensional. He had a nice dynamic with Star-Lord. And when you eventually find out he has evil intentions, it didn't feel jarring or stuff like that. So it's just, um, yeah, I just felt like Ego overall was just a really good villain that stepped in the right direction. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I really liked Ego in this as well. He's probably... One of the best villains in the franchise still. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of sad, you know? It's like, that's good, you know, that he, we got a good villain, but it's like, it's too bad that we don't get more good villains. Yeah, if we just had more, if we had just people in the writing room to be more in, in focused on making the villains just as good as the heroes. But, yeah, just, I thought this was great. Um, I know uh, Crimson disagrees about... Ego. Uh huh. Go ahead, speak a piece. Go ahead. No, you, you got the floor. You got the floor. Oh. Why do you not like ego? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm watching you. I don't like. I don't like ego because. I don't know, I just didn't like this interpretation of him. I don't really have a specific reason. I, I really don't. Mm. I just don't like this interpretation of him. Yeah, okay. Alright. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, and Ego has uh, her, I guess, companion assistant, <coughs> Mantis. Um, eh? he, he, uh, she, she was funny. <laughs> I mean, there's not really much to say about Mantis. Um, she's, 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 far, she's fine. Like, she, yeah, she has telepathic powers I guess like she when she touches someone they choose an empath empath yeah that's what it is empath feel people's feelings um I did really like that scene um where he t- she touches 
Star Lord and it's like you feel sexual love for Gamora. Like even though I saw it in the trailer, I was still laughing in the in the movie. I was like, it was it was funny. And then she has some funny stuff with Drax later on, Drax later on in the movie. Um, but other than that, yeah, she's she's an, she's an all right addition. Um, I thought she wasn't necessary. Well, no, she wasn't. But she did play a factor towards the end. So it's not like she was completely useless. I She's hate, pretty useless. I hate Nebula. I hope Thanos kills her. God yeah. damn! I hate Nebula. <laughs> you didn't oh even like gosh. her in this movie? Oh God. I can't stand the actress that plays her. That's Karen Gillan. I know. Oh. The only role she's ever been good in is, doc- is in Doctor Who. You didn't like her in Jumanji? God, no. I actually liked her in Jumanji. Um, I didn't even like Jumanji. Well, neither did I. I thought, I thought it was okay. I thought it was fun. It was eh. Mm. Did you see um, Jumanji, Nick? Actually, no. You did I not? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I've been busy. I haven't seen it, but I'm probably... It's on digital now, so mm-hmm. I'll see it, but... I feel like such a bitch. Such a... Just... I don't know. I just she is, but it's like I still fa- I still got some humanity out of her in this movie where I'm like, okay, I'm not completely. I don't think you completely suck now. Mm, yeah, I mean, I got a little more, but then she goes back to just being a maniac. Y- yeah, this fucking maniac, and it's like you just killed it. It's like I I, I again don't care about you. I don't expect her to go full fr- like sympathetic towards the end because at the end of the day she's still messed up. Like yeah, so I think Thanos she should is. kill her and put He's her out of her off. misery. Mm-hmm. And put us out of our misery. <laughs> I'm sick of her being on the screen. Dang, okay. <laughs> getting, getting into the story a little bit. So the golden people in this movie, um, they hired the Guardians to stop that giant monster in the beginning of the film. And then Rocket decides to fuck everything up. Yeah, he decides to steal something from the golden people. And uh, they find out, and they chase them in space, and they get their they get their ship freaking destroyed, and uh, Ego, in the nick of time, s- saves them, and uh, he takes uh, Star Lord, Gamora, and Drax to his planet, while Rocket and uh, Groot watch over Nebula, who they also captured, and get some repairs for their ship, and meanwhile, um, the the. Yondu and the uh, Ravengers. the Ravengers. Well, first of all, Yondu at first is like in on it, but later on he doesn't want to. They they're they're sent to hunt down the Guardians, and they find Rocket and Groot, and uh, eventually Taser Face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Taser Face. Um, no, we got the Taser Face. Taser Face. <laughs> so eventually, oh, oh he, yeah, what a great villain! He's a great villain. He decides to <laughs> overpower, overthrow Yondu, and become the new leader of the Ravagers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he freaking he holds, um, he holds Rocket and uh, Yondu and Groot. Captive on the ship, because um, um, Nebula sold, sold, sells them out, um, and eventually um, um, <clears throat> Yondu and Rocket and Groot fr- get free from the ship and kills everyone in this awesome sequence of uh, this uh, music playing, this cool music playing in the background while um, Yondu's arrow is just killing everyone that was brutal. in the sh- yeah. That and people, people can, people can hate me all they want, but you, you can't look me in the eye and tell me that Yandu isn't a fucking badass. Yeah, he he killed everyone. And people on think that, that literally he, everyone people think that he's a Bradley. ridiculous character. Mm-hmm. Huh? He people think that he is a ridiculous character. Yeah, I kind of thought so at first. I did it. I liked him. Yeah, I I did say like in the in the previous um, review that I think this is a better comic book interpret. I mean, better interpretation than a comic book, and he's even a better character in this. And uh, yeah, that entire sequence was just amazing. That's vintage James Gunn. That off color, like 
humor, which is also dark at the same time. It's just mm-hmm. that which is great. Oh, I didn't even mention when Groot tries to free them out of the cage, and he keep, and uh, Rocket keeps telling oh, Rocket is <laughs> um, Rocket and Yondu tell them to get his old Finn so he can get free, and he keeps bringing back the frog thing, and then he just brings back a severed uh, Oh yeah, oh. yeah that, that part was funny. It's like, please <laughs> tell me you have a you have a uh, bucket of severed limbs in the refrigerator. <laughs> No, then let's agree never to discuss this. That was that was funny. Um, so meanwhile, Ego takes Star Lord, Drax, and Gamora to his planet, and Ego teaches Star Lord his celestial powers. And um, of course, Gamora is thinking something weird's going on. I'm not sure about this, but of course, Star Lord is getting lost in his celestial powers, and Drax is too busy messing around with um um. Dang, what's her name? Mantis. <laughs> Mantis. Mantis. I'm sorry. Um, and eventually it leads to some dark stuff when we find out that Ego um, was the one that killed Star Lord's mother by putting a tumor, a tumor in her head. Damn, that was a good plot twist. Oh my Shit. gosh, that was just. And then what scared me the most about Ego is that he was like, yeah, it killed me to do it. Mm-hmm. And then just brushed it off. Yeah. Like, her life means nothing. This is why I don't like Ego. Because he doesn't... He thinks that, like, all life except... all Everyone's lives except for his mean nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, That's, since he's so powerful, I expect him to have that kind of reaction. That's why, you know... That's his fault. That's why the, he is the way that he is. Is that he has such a big ego that he just can't... I mean, that, that's literally what it is. Mm-hmm. is it, yeah, he can't exactly. <laughs> have, you know, a real like connection and appreciation for other life. That's why he keeps screwing different um, species around the galaxy and the universe. It is gross. Yeah, it is just mm-hmm. kind of gross. And then Peter just like, without even thinking, just starts. <laughs> 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 Damn! It's like, like that's some Firefly stuff. Hey, Firefly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not armed. Good. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was that was an amazing twist. Uh, that got me there. Um, and then Ego just becomes full berserker killer planet mode, and it just gets chaotic from there. And just um, eventually, Rocket Group and Yondu catch up to them and help them stop Ego and then it's just insanity insanity just goes on from there and also the golden people eventually find them and there's a freaking space battle in the, on the planet and at the same time you have um, Ego fighting Star Lord celestial powers everywhere and you have Mantis um, with her sleeping powers trying to put Ego to sleep, but it only works for a few minutes, and um, which is bullshit. Which is bull. Also, Rocket and Groot has this um, detonator that they're going to use to blow up the entire planet. Um, wow, I don't, I didn't know their detonator would be that powerful to get rid of a celestial planet. But comic book logic, I guess. If they place it in the exact right. Oh spot. yeah, they had, they place it in the brain in the center of the planet. That's what they did. <laughs> Yeah. And of course Groot, baby Groot is the point to do that. Nothing will go wrong at all. I am Groot. I am Groot. No, no, yeah. I am Groot. No, 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 no. <laughs> They gave away too many of the best jokes in the trailer. They kind of did. Yeah, that, that mm-hmm. shit was hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love that group bit. Yeah, that group was good. Um, but yeah, and eventually we find out that a little plot point that um, if Ego dies, then Star Lord's celestial powers die, which I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be the case because yeah. I feel like that's going to play that, a factor that, that, in I feel like that Infinity was, War. Yeah, that yeah. was Ego just talking hot, hot garbage. It's like if I die, you don't get your powers. You don't get your powers. Yeah, I don't know how to. You gotta keep me alive. You gonna be, you gonna go playing around? You know me? I can be the Pac Man. Yeah, I be Pac Man. I be the Hulk. I be the Hulk. You want me to be the Hulk? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves the Hulk. No. Yeah. Oh God! Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about that real yeah. quick. Um, that's literally the worst part of the movie for me is David Hasselhoff. Any time they mentioned David Hasselhoff, or he made a freaking appearance, or, 
<laughs> Even in the end credit scene? No! Oh, I don't like amazing. David Hasselhoff. That was amazing. The, the 70s disco. Oh my god. Jesus. Was... I hate David Hasselhoff. I don't like him. I did like him in anything. Even the Spongebob Squarepants Even movie. Night Why are you freaking here? Even Knight Rider? No, I did like him in Knight Rider. Knight Rider's awesome. Or he was there in that old Nick Fury Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie. Oh, gosh, Jesus movie. Christ. Terrible. You know he was in Jekyll and Hyde? He was amazing. Really? Sorry, he was great. He was great, huh? He was great. Great, <laughs> in quotes. Watch it, it's amazing. It's well, so good. Yeah, okay. But yeah, just every time they try to shoehorn in the David Hasselhoff joke or whatever, I'm just like, no, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know. Um, and towards the end, even though I said that the Guardian's humor mostly works, um, towards the end when, spoilers, John Doe dies... Yeah. I'm so sad about that. I am I sad. He's genuinely you. upset. He was genuinely upset. And it's like yeah. he's sacrificing his life for Quill. And, but that is funeral. You were kind of joking around a little too much. Like, yeah. I wanted to. Disrespectful. Yeah, I wanted to be a little bit more serious. Um, but uh, Quill still had the emotional pull to that. Maybe your father. But he ain't your daddy! daddy! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Yeah! Oh, God, he's so... He's so great. I'm going to miss him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss him, like, really bad. I will miss him. I wish he he could have stuck around around for Infinity War. You know, still stuck. Although they actually had Michael Rucker go on set for Infinity War to, you know, during filming to try and, like, ward off, oh, why isn't Michael Rucker there? Does his character die or something? You know. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Actually, yeah, spoiler, he does. Yeah, what? he's dead. He's dead. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the only thing to really talk about are the visuals, which are, I think are amazing. They're much more colorful than they were in the first film, which is what I wanted. A bunch of zany colors and just being weird, weird, weirder than the first movie. And it was that. Um, I didn't get to see this in 3D. I bet it would have been cool to see it in 3D. Um, and yeah. Uh, and then we have the post credit scenes! Like, four? Seven. Four? Seven? Seven. Seven. Can you name Pretty them? sure there's seven. Can you name them off for me? Because I only got four. Alright, so there's the first. The first one is the Craglin one doing the fin. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah that technically counts as number one. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, he was good in the movie. Yeah, too. he was. He was better yeah, in this one. They gave him more stuff, and he was actually good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I liked him. Yeah, so yeah, oh. he was messing with the fin, and it it, it uh, accidentally stabbed Drax in the yeah. chest. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, um, there was the, the one with Teenage Group. Teen Group playing video games in his room, and his room's all messed up and full of yeah. trees and weeds and stuff like that, and he's. And like Quill's like, can you clean your room, please? And then Groot's like, I am Groot. <laughs> playing honest. a video game. Uh huh. Playing yeah. a video game. Yeah. And yeah, that was kind of funny. Um, and then I have the Golden People yeah. um, cr- creating Adam Warlock. Hey, another mm-hmm. member of the Guardians. Hey, guess what? They're never going to use him, or if they do use him, it's going to be wrong. But you know, I don't want to kill your dreams. You just did. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? Oh, my most seems with Phase Four, anyhow. They yeah, need to. He's not coming around until Phase Four. Oh well, that's what I expected because uh, at this point, yeah, we can't really put him in here just yet. Phase Four, I'll wait. That's fine. Um, then we had uh, the 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 original Guardians uh, with um, Sylvester Stallone, Michelle Yeoh. Um, and the other, um... Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. You know, that, Miley- that was Miley Cyrus? Yeah, the robot head was Miley Cyrus. Oh my gosh. I know. Apparently. And then, what was that orange alien with the with the Doctor Strange powers? That was Krugar. Krugar, yeah. That, he, was, that wasn't a post-credit, was it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Oh. Oh, that was Krugar. He succeeded Doctor Strange as a Sorcerer Supreme in the comics. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that was a nice touch there. Um... Yeah, I'm up for seeing a Guardians movie with them. See how they go. Sylvester Stallone was pretty good in this movie, being the head of the um, Ravagers. We didn't see much of Michelle Yell, but I'm sure she'll be good if she comes back. Um, and then I have Stan Lee 
talking to the Watchers. Um, first of all, when I saw the Watchers in the, in the movie, the I was like, oh, the Watchers are here! Oh, man, I can't believe the Watchers are here! I didn't think they would actually use them because Fantastic Four and stuff like that. They don't have the rights to it, but apparently they did have the rights to the Watchers and Stan Lee was talking to them in a different galaxy. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just kidding. It was five post-credits. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was seven. What was the fifth one, then? Because I only got four. Oh wait, no, we did talk about all five of them because yeah. we had the other, we had the, the one with the arrow yep. stabbing Drax. Okay, that was all. Oh my god, that was too many post credit scenes. Oh goodness. Um, uh, yeah, Marvel, you need to you need to like lay off on the some of the post post credit scenes, especially the ones that are unnecessary. I'm going to go on a little tyrant about that. Um, if you're going to have post credit scenes that are just not billing to anything and it's just a laugh, put it in the mid credits. Don't put it at the end credits because you don't want people to just wait there for no reason. We'll talk about that when we get to Spider Man Homecoming. But just yeah, to me I'm just like yeah, this was kind of a bit too much. They were funny and they were cool, but it's like we didn't need five of them. Uh yeah, I think that's all I gotta say about Guardians Volume Two. I, I really liked it. I don't I don't enjoy it as much as the first film, but I think it's it's still a really good sequel, and it it expanded on some of the stuff that I wanted to see in the sequel. More character development, more zany stuff. A really good villain. Um, yeah, it was just all around a good time. One of my favorites in the MCU. I give uh, Guardians 2 a B+. Dr. Nick? That's actually what I gave it to. It's a solid, solid movie. Another solid movie. It's not like it's not as good as the first one, but that is a, it's a solid, great movie. That's honestly what I gave it to. Mm-hmm. Grims did Amazon. I will give it a B. And that's that. Uh, Captain <laughs> Eagle. I as well am going to give it a B. I enjoyed it. I liked the, um, I liked the whole uh, story with Peter's father and getting more detail with all that. I thought that was good. Uh, I did feel like for the first part of the movie, it kind of felt unfocused. Like, there wasn't really a story until the ego thing kind of all came together at the last minute. Yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. Yeah. But uh, overall, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. Alright. That's our thoughts on Guardians Volume 2. Very good sequel.